Hello everyone. Welcome to Pro Progress and Prospects in Bio series. So today is our Hello everyone, welcome to Progress and Prospects in Biology webinar series. So after our holidays, this is our second season and this is the first, se first session of our second series. And today we have someone very special with us, Professor Moushumi Poddar Sharkar from Presidency University, Kolkata. Welcome ma'am. And for Thank our you. viewers, for our viewers, you can type all your questions in the comments and for our feedback link, it will be posted in the comment after the end of the session and it won't be given through email links. And so without further delay, I will ask our professor convey conveyor and our mentor, Professor Anna Roy Banerjee, our for welcome, welcoming our speaker today. Thank you, Akashlina. A very warm welcome to all our viewers uh, who have been with us, as Akashlina said, for the last um, 40 episodes of Progress and Prospects in Biology. There have been 29 uh, Sunday webinars where uh, speakers from across the various uh, branches of biology have uh, sensitized viewers, reflected upon the latest research in the various fields of the biosciences. And uh, our uh, 11 speakers have talked about uh, the prospects, the interconnectedness of uh, biosciences and non-biosciences. And we are uh, so grateful for your continuing patronage. Um, we have a website. Uh, we have the YouTube channel and um, uh, the social media, uh, 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 different outlets of the social media uh, uh, that have been worked by a very diligent uh, team of volunteers. Uh, so um, uh, today, Akashlina and uh, Pail will be uh, moderating and hosting, respectively. Uh, Sanjana has been the one to uh, generate uh, the link and send out all the emails. Uh, Shinjini has been coordinating. Uh, and we have a team of dedicated people who are working in the backgrounds, all students themselves. So um, I must acknowledge them because the first uh, season uh, has been uh, such a, a you know humbling experience for all of us that the speakers have made the time to come and talk on our platform. There have been interactions and community building and uh, a number of collaborations have happened because of the lectures. So um, with a lot of uh, uh, you know gratitude uh, and uh, 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 honor, uh, today we welcome our uh, guest, uh, Professor Moshumi Poddar Sharkar, who is also a very dear friend, and uh, she needs no introduction. The moment her publicity posters were sent out in the social media, there was a lot of excitement to uh, listen to her. Uh, so a very warm welcome, and it is my honor and privilege to introduce our today's speaker, um, who actually needs no introduction, but still I have the um, uh, absolute delight to introduce her. So she's currently a professor in the Department of Life Sciences, Presidency University, uh, where from she graduated in 1984 and then did her PhD from the University of Calcutta. Then she joined as a JRF for PhD at Indian Statistical Institute under the mentorship of the renowned naturalist and scientist, Professor R.L. Brombochari, uh, who had introduced the mammalian pheromone research in India. And uh, we shall ask Professor uh, Poddar Sharkar at the end of her talk uh, to share with us some details about that. So um, moving on, in 2009, uh, she was a faculty at the University of Calcutta. Uh, and then in 2019, she joined her alma mater, Presidency University. Uh, she initiated her research career with a publication in Nature in 1990 and presented her first lecture at the Cornell University, USA. 
Um, she has spent more than 30 years on unraveling the facts of chemical communication in big cats, uh, the presence of acetyl 1 pyrrolin, the aroma molecule of Indian Bashmati rice in the tiger marking fluid is internationally acclaimed. And this is also the uh, subject of various popular writings. Uh, and that has been a phenomenal work. Uh, she also bagged many publications in high impact factor journals on the basis of her research work, like the plant cell, lipids, sensor and actuator, Chemosphere and many journals of Elsevier, Springer, BMC, and others. She has also authored several book chapters in um, uh, acclaimed um, uh, under acclaimed publication houses uh, on the pheromone of big cats like tiger, cheetah, leopard, lion. Um, she recently worked on different aspects of biomolecules of plant and animal origin and has developed the technique of headspace isolation of volatiles of agricultural products through GCMS and trying to generate human resources by training program on that methodology. See, she is also associated with several academic bodies and journals, such as uh, the uh, prominent names that we've just mentioned. She has been nominated by the Indo-US Exchange Program and INSA in 2011 and 12 for exchanging and sharing her views with USA and Hungary. Her passion is to work in the field on various ecological uh, aspects. And um, I would uh, like to end uh, this introduction, which by no means uh, does justice to our speaker tonight. By her own words, um, uh, she says that she likes to concentrate on integrative biology with an interdisciplinary approach. In her research arena, she believes in the three Fs, forest, formulate and figure out. So with that, um, it is my absolute honor to welcome our speaker tonight. And the stage is yours. Thank you, Ina. Namaskar. So respected audience and dear friends, I am honored to give my exposition in this platform. And uh, I express my Sincere gratitude to Professor Aina Roy, who has introduced me on in this platform. And I should express my thanks to, also to the organizer who are conducting this uh, web series. So thank you all. Uh, before going to the main topic, why I have chosen this topic, Simiochemical? Actually, for last one year in this COVID situation, we have faced, we have traced too much. Now we are thinking and rethinking that what damage, what type of damage we did in the environment, the impact we have created in the name of human civilization for last few decades, now, in addition, climatic change is a factor and it is very difficult to handle. It will be a hard task. So to create a resilient, eco-friendly, sustainable environment, chemical research uh, can be a, can show us a new arena which may solve some of these problems. So I'm uh, going to this big domain. Uh, just I'm sharing the slides. Just a few minutes, please. Is it okay? Yes, ma'am, it's coming. It's coming.
Yes. Yes, ma'am. It's fine. Yes. Can I start? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. So I'm starting my lecture with this statement of Upanishad: "The world is a family." So in the context of pheromone research, uh, I will try to explain this statement to clarify this statement in, in Boshudhaibo Kutumbakam. That is, now what is semiochemical? I will try to solve these questions one by one. That is, what are semiochemicals? Do semiochemicals have existence in all types of organisms from lower to higher organisms, even in plants and microbes? What are the roles of semiochemicals in the life of organisms? How does it can be transmitted from one individual to another? In the next phase, I'll try to explain why do this type of chemical communication becomes essential in the life of animals? And are these pheromones are essential for maintaining the essence of life in organisms? Ma'am, one second, type, please. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you can hide the taskbar that is present in the bottom by clicking yeah. on the hide button. Yes. Yes, ma'am, okay. thank you. And ma'am, you can open your video if you want. Okay, no problem. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Are these pheromones are essential for maintaining the essence of life in the organisms? If these type of communications are settled through evolution, then what are the roles it plays in the highest evolved organisms, human being? How this mode of transmission mechanisms can be utilized for the welfare of human being? So I'll try to solve all these questions one by one. Before to address these queries, I should say semiochemicals is a compound or a mixture of compounds that carry information which are mostly volatile. Some of them might be non-volatile also. And it has existence from E. coli to elephant, including plant systems. And in general, it, uh, it is synthesized through different biochemical pathways in living organisms and play some important physiological roles at the intra and interspecific level of the organisms. So in brief, when it will be with the intraspecific, that, that is, at the inter-individual level, then it will be called as pheromone. And if it is be with interspecific level, then we know that it will be alumon or chiromon. And alumon especially have uh, adaptively favoring to the emitting species and chiromon to the receiving species. Now, what are the main purposes? and the universal importance of this pheromone. Actually, nature has devised such a phenomena to utilize some metabolic waste, which are coming through different biochemical pathways. Because we know that according to first law of thermodynamics, conservation of energy is the primary factor. So living organisms will try to use this metabolic waste for some other physiological functions. And uh, one thing that by these mechanisms, we will try to establish such some evolutionary linkage that white is present in lower to higher organisms. So there must have some meaning. And in addition, phenomenon actually just like a uh, uh, biochemical fingerprinting because it can carry message, it can distinguish individual, it helps to distinguish individual from self to non-self. 
So the message for individuality will be carried by this pheromone. And another aspect, if we think, that is uniformity and chaining for conserving specific gene sequence. That means some genes are conserved, we know. So there should have some uniformity and a link so that this conserved gene will produce some compounds which are present in the many living organisms. So in a brief, if we consider a big set in, with a single word, that is survival value. Pheromone must have some survival value. That's why. But uh, as pheromone research is a big domain, it's not possible to uh, clarify all this aspect within 30 minutes. So I have taken some of the topics uh, for explanation. First, uh, in the first phase of my lecture, uh, I will address as uh, history of pheromone research in last 50 years in India and abroad. And uh, then in the next part, I will explain that is uh, pheromone has a direct implication to the animal behavior. So I will explain the pheromone and ethology in that respect, which will be considered as a signaling molecules and which it will be helpful for signaling mechanisms. So I will explain that topic in the next phase. In the third phase, actually, I will try to search the meaning of pheromone, pheromonal significance in the light of Darwinian concept and the progress of uh, importance of pheromone if we search for it, then then what will be the explanation in post-Darwinian scenario? I will explain it. And the finally, that is, we'll try to utilize this pheromone for human welfare so that we can create a sustainable, eco-friendly, green environment. So in animal systems in brief, besides visible and auditory cues, odorous chemical signals is the third partner. And communication means reception of and respond to. So in the inter-individual level, one will, when it will be transmitted from one individual, immediately another individual will respond to it. And in the another language, we can say that other cues are short distance cues, but pheromone is a long distance cues and an honest, honest signal. Because I have highlighted this word honest in my succeeding uh, slides, you, uh, it will be explained why it is honest signal. In the plant systems, we can see it has a different meaning, but the thing is chemical structure is similar. That is, is that it is a, a pheromone volatiles and non-volatile molecules with low molecular weight. Some are high molecular weights. Most of the cases it are low molecular weight. So in a brief, uh, the total uh, uh, chemical uh, profile of this plant systems uh, is defined as an phytooxylipin, phyto means plant. So oxylipin is the group of molecules which has similar meaning of the animal systems as pheromone. So here the meaning is a uh, little different. That means uh, it helps the plant systems to interact with the environment. Uh, for example, so we know that pollination strategies and uh, uh, it, it acts as an immune system in, uh, in the plants. That is, uh, some predator-prey relationship will be established by this molecule. And uh, in case, uh, uh, if we think in a broader aspect that if it's dropping or plant talk, that means uh, signals from one plants will be transmitted to the other plants. So there will be a, a concept will be generated that we made designated as plant talk. And uh, in case of stress by the attack of pathogen, uh, uh, biotic factor or non-biotic factor, so some molecules will be emitted from the plants and these will be all under this heading 
oxyliquin. So if we search for the history, Professor Carlson and Lucier from Max Planck, Germany, they have published a paper in Nature in 1959, and that is the uh, evidence, old evidence, that is the first evidence rather for pheromonal concept. And uh, Bombicol is the molecule, it's not a big molecule, uh, it's a made up of uh, hydroxy group and uh, with a double bond. And bombicol is the first chemically characterized pheromone from the silk moth in 1959 by the German biochemist uh, uh, who has got the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1939, but rejected in. And then uh, again, he was accepted in 1945 after World War II. So Adolf Rich Jones is the first inventor of insect pheromone is that is bombicol. So from that journey has been started. And in 60s, we have got the concept has been developed in the uh, public domain. Uh, we can see various films from BBC. And I think you have my students have heard about Attenborough. WWF has been generated. And uh, the famous films, uh, if you have got, if you got the opportunity to see this, I think it is the best film in my life. 1966, uh, it was made, uh, the name is Born Free by, uh, based on the storybook of uh, Joy Adamson. So um, I'll uh, tell a story related to this. Uh, and then you can get Animal Planet, Discovery Channel. And in uh, uh, this century, 2005 onwards, 99 to 2005, I am giving just a record, human um, man, man, animal conflict. So many uh, uh, newspaper are, is projecting many they are projecting this conflict incident incidents of conflict such and such so now the uh, importance of pheromone research come of age and in india similarly that was initiated in early 70s when my professor professor brombochari actually is with george adamson in uh, africa and uh, Khoiri, you know, in our childhood days, we have heard about this tigress Khoiri. And uh, uh, he, my professor, went uh, to Simlifal Forest. And uh, actually, Khoiri, Noihar uh, Dolini, is the human mother of Khoiri. And uh, from that visit, uh, my mentor, Professor Brumbachari, uh, initiated this project uh, to work with pheromone and uh, he was associated with uh, born free foundation uh, till her till his last breath and i have shown uh, this is the last letter which was written by him to uh, Mac virginia mckinna who is the actress of born free born free uh, in uh, case of for uh, projecting joy adamson and bill uh, was uh, george so uh, this was an evidence, uh, this was an collections from my diary. So I am showing you for historical importance. Now I am coming to the some basic points. That in is the most of the cases I have already told that pheromones are volatile. So molecular weight would be less, 300, uh, about 300 and uh, mostly low boiling. And carbon number will be very less, that is uh, 10, 12, 14, like that. And uh, they must have some specific order. Uh, and uh, so that uh, animal can distinguish the specificity of these molecules. Mostly these are lipophilic in nature and they have very, very low threshold value so that be so that perceptible so that it can be perceptible in very low concentration and there are different sources 
uh, of pheromone in animals, uh, it, uh, animal to animal. Uh, it will be like the main sources are urine, feces, and marking, so it's etc. But uh, there are different glands, uh, interjudicial glands, like that in different animals. So now I am coming to that. The question is same compound may act as a pheromone in different organisms. I'm giving such an example. The same compound is, that is seven dosin cell, one ill acetate. It was identified from elephant and it was also identified from a mod. So same compound may act as a pheromone in different organisms or a number of pheromone and molecules which you can designate it as signature mixture for that animal, particular organ for that particular organisms. But that type same compounds may occur also in other organisms also. Now I am coming to the second point that is interrelations of pheromone and animal behavior. We know that ethology is the study of animal behavior and uh, which is concerned with the uh, physiological, genetic, and psych psychological changes in the animal's life. So animal behavior, we know that is a coordinated physiological attribute, which is governed by genetic and psychological imprint. Now, if we compare different type of cues, I, we can see that I, it's a table from the table you can see that is the chemical communication is the uh, most uh, a third degree communication but it is essential for behavioral purposes so these are the extended animal behavior in relation to pheromone so all you know uh, that is uh, you can uh, in uh, nature, you can see these incidences are going on uh, in your neighborhood. So that can be explainable by this pheromone. So in this context, I'm coming that in 1973, 1973, first Nobel Prize came from the ethology and Conrad Lorenz and Frisch and Timbajan, they have explained uh, that what is animal behavior and uh, we are trying to explain the animal behavior in relation to chemical communication here. I'm showing some modes, different modes of chemical communications in tiger. First uh, slides, uh, it is ordinary urination. Uh, it's a, uh, another phase of animal uh, uh, tiger behavior, body rubbing on grasses. So they are transmitting some signaling compounds through grass and uh, uh, scratching on trees. They, that there is uh, there are interdigital glands within their uh, uh, fingers, and they are scratching so that secretion from these glands will be smeared in the tree trunk. So that is a mode, another mode of communications. But the most important mode, which was first observed by George Schuller and my professor in Kanha Forest in 1964. And George, after returning to UK, noted it down in his uh, field diary. And from that, uh, evident, from that uh, document, suppose, this is the first step is then that tiger has a mode raising his tail, spraying some fluid upward. That is, we have termed this mode as marking fluid spraying because to um, eliminate some confusion that it is not anal gland secretion, it is not ordinary urination, it is a different type of mode that is called. By many scientists, it is called as scent marking. But to eliminate these confusions, we have termed this terminology as marking fluid spray. Uh, in the fourth figure, I have shown that the uh, uh, facial structure is, uh, it's uh, uh, to some extent, you can recognize a different type. So this feature is called the flamen 
behavior. Flaming behavior means it is associated with the, I have told already, some compounds will be non-volatile. So it is associated with the, with non-volatile pheromonal compounds. That is a tiger will lick this urine and they will send, there is a uh, the organ which is called as vomeronasal organs or Jacobson's organ. So they will transmit the messages through this Jacobson's organ. So, so for transmission, I'm showing this two figure. Uh, main olfactory systems is associated with this volatile molecule that is nasal epithelium. And there is another mode that is that will be associated with the accessory olfactory systems and it is responsible for transmitting messages by non-volatile molecule with non-volatile molecules now the thing is after our identification that is 2-acetyl 1-pyrrolein it is the major compound of indian basmati rice and better to say as from Govindabok rice, if you just smell or take a whip, you can see that uh, there is a spe specific special type of smell. So that same compound occurs in the targin mitral fluid. So we have observed this. In Kanha, Brahmachari observed this uh, spraying mode. But in Simlipal, when he started to work with Khoiri, he first get the smell just like in 2-acetyl-1 pyrrolin. Now he started to work in our laboratory of ISI and finally uh, we have become successful to publish it in nature. That is the molecules is same. It's a very small molecules and uh, molecular weight is 100, 111, that is 111. Now with time, we have seen that same molecules is occurring in different organisms. For example, Pandanus is another example. Uh, you may generally call it as Paishpata. I think in Bengali versions, uh, there is uh, uh, our in our age, our uh, grand, uh, uh, grandma used to put some leaves in the um, rice when it boils. So that is called Paishpata. It smells just like 2 acetyl 1 pyrrolin and you know uh, that is moduka latifolia fruits is, has also the same smell another smell you can get from the civetone but the compound is different it is civetone it's a ketone it's uh, not 2 ap so that uh, in our nose we cannot distinguish uh, civetone from 2AP. But I think uh, probably the animal system can distinguish what is civetone or what is 2AP. Definitely it should be. So this is the mass chromatograms and uh, that is the uh, mass fragmentation of 2-acetyl um, uh, pyrrolin. And so from this observations, we can think that is, what is the root of evolution? That is, same molecule is occurring in the plant systems and same molecule is occurring in the animal systems too. So, what will be the uh, basic biosynthetic pathway to generate this molecule? So, it's a, it can be synthesized. We have synthesized in our lab that it is possible with a, just proline amino acid and with a sugar, fructose or glucose. So these two basic molecules are coming through the primary metabolic pathway. And this primary metabolic pathway <coughs> in some specific glands are with some uh, enzymes, they're synthesizing this specific molecules uh, in two different systems. So their uh, new question arises that what will be the uh, mode for this independent evolution of chemical compound in the context of chemical ecology. So in summary, if we concentrate the whole idea um, till I have explained, the two main thing is, two main biological implications are territorial maintenance and attracting opposite sex. That means to defend same sex and to invite opposite sex. And uh, in this context, they should maintain 
individuality so that one individual can be recognized from the other. So now the confusion and conflicts arises and many unsolved questions remain. One is, for example, co-evolution of the molecules in both plants and animal system already I have explained. And second is concept of sympatric and allopatric speciation in case of occurrence of Tuapian tiger and Indian leopard, but absent in African cheetah, African and Asiatic lion. This molecule is only present in Indian leopard and tiger. And I have got an opportunity and uh, one fine morning, I've got a letter from uh, one of my colleagues from Iowa State University that he has got some sample from Siberian tiger. He wants to analyze it, whether 2AP is present because uh, he had US origin. So he cannot distinguish what type of aroma it is 2AP. He explained in this letter that I am getting some smell, but I cannot compare it whether it is 2AP or others. So it will be easy if I can send uh, my student to your lab at Calcutta University uh, through this Fulbright Fellowship. And uh, that will be easier to identify whether 2AP is present in the Siberian tiger as like Bengal tiger. So one uh, i can just uh, it's uh, i am happy to explain you this um, quite bit, little bit excited that is uh, through a uh, uh, airport the box came to my lab and i start to started to open the test tubes which i packed under dry ice and when i open it i have i got this feeling so really it's a story that it is present also in Siberian tiger. So you have analyzed it and uh, uh, that was a really a good one. So 2AP is present in the Siberian tiger also. But we don't have till now opportunity to see it in Indo-Chinese tiger or Sumatran tiger. So that in this context, the speciation of uh, through sympatric speciation and allopatric speciation, uh, we try will try to explain that how is it possible. So another unsolved question remain. Next is if we try to understand the concept of individuality, that means it. Uh, suppose if I explain that. Every tiger is emitting a uh, marking fluid, which consists of suppose 50 to 100 chemical compounds. But how is it possible that one tiger can recognize that it is coming from another? Now, the, we have started some work and try to rethink that how is it possible? Suppose I can give you an example. It consists of A to Z compounds. A is small, B is uh, in bigger amount, C is um, in more amount. Suppose that and the permutation combination between these A to Z compounds, it will create a unique characteristics for that individual. So that will be the basic idea of pheromone. Otherwise, it couldn't be possible uh, when a tiger is roaming through a three kilometer approximate three, more than three, it would be in a Sundarbon. So how is it possible to uh, spray, uh, to transmit information to uh, uh, opposite sex? So, and uh, another concept was developed during that time. How is it possible? Because he's roaming a big area through a big area. So about the sustenance in nature, there are some specific fixative in the tiger. So this is lipidic in nature. We have analyzed it. And with this lipid, it's just for an example, you take an example, just uh, uh, if you just take a perfume and put it some oil on it, uh, the smell will persist for some long time. So this is the same philosophy in the in case of sustenance of the pheromonal molecules in nature. So in the marking fluid, we have got a sizable amount of lipids also. So that is an another unsolved question, gradually solved. 
Now the thing is, my last point is, that is in the instinctive behave some uh, pheromonal relationship in the light of instinctive behavior and cognitive behavior. So I'm coming to my next phase. To explain this, we all know that the origin of species, uh, which was written in 18, uh, published in 1859 by Charles Darwin, it's more common. But it less popular, uh, popularized this book is The Descent of Men and Selection in Relation to Sex. It was written in 1871. But due to conservative attitude of the then scientific community, the concept of animal behavior in the light of sexual selection has not been well documented and nurtured like the theory of natural selection. So in Darwin's uh, book in 1971, in page 398, uh, he explained that it is between the individuals of the same sex and generally the males in order to drive away or kill their rivals, the females remain passive. In the next para, he wrote, while in others, the struggle is likewise between the individuals of the same sex in order to excite or charm those of the opposite sex, generally the females, which no longer remain passive, but select the more agreeable partners. So now, way back to Darwinian idea in 1871, we try to search this concept and gradually, again, Nobel Prize came in 2014 on the basis of neural networking, giving importance to the cognitive behavior. Now the question is, that is expression of behavior through pheromone, if we explain in the light of neo-Darwinism, we know that inherent behavior is related to the evolutionary adaptation, according to Darwin, through natural selection. However, cognitive behavior is the emotional expression. That means developments of personal coping strategies try is to solve to solve current problems is coming with this cognitive behavior. Therefore, conflict between in and behavior and cognitive behavior. So how do we explain that is behavior related to pheromone? Uh, actually, uh, what type of idea we can develop that is it is uh, uh, either it is coming from through inherent behavior or through cognitive behavior. Because when the evolution reaches to human being, we couldn't select our partners to phenomenal communication in general because we can write love letters. There are different modes of expression. So uh, that is in a uh, cognitive behavior actually get more advantage to the through the evolution when it reaches to the human hierarchy, ultimately to human. So we have many signals we can send to our friends for communications. So the importance of pheromone, we have to think that is whether it is associated with, more associated with inherent behavior or it will be more inclined to the cognitive behavior. And do the pheromone has any biological significance in human being? Now, I'm just showing another examples. If we reach us to this highest hierarchy of evolution, we can explain that cognitive behavior develops through time scale and development with the development of complex nervous system in brain. So behavioral complexities, complexity develops through complex neural circuitry. We agree. <laughs> so revisit to the Darwinian concept of evolutionary adaptation in the context of cognitive behavior, we'll try to think. And another examples came gradually. That, that is, we have in late 80s and 90s, we have got many evidences for homosexuality and lesbianisms 
in human being but now we, you can get many information in internet that in the animal system it also exists so whether we'll redefine pheromone in this new context that is another unsolved questions now uh, so in the third part for my new next generations i'm hi highlighting these questions and i think we'll get some answer after few years so in this contest i'm shifting to my fourth point that is in the insect world we have got many evidences mammalian pheromone research uh, uh, actually we do not get too many publications now we are getting but in our time it was not too much uh, so now you can uh, but uh, most of the researchers were concentrated on insect pheromone so you have got many evidences for insect pheromone research in this content i have explained that uh, you know green leaf what is green leaf volatiles green leaf volatiles are some small molecules which might be aldehyde or uh, aldehyde or ketones small molecules hexanol octanol nonanol like that and uh, actually plant releases this compound for, uh, with the attack of insects and this green leaf volatiles might be the solution for developing insect uh, pest management strategies for the new century so i just will try to give some basic idea about this green leaf volatiles it is actually a defense mechanisms so plants emits this molecule in nature and uh, it's a it has some ecophysiological implications i can explain that is chemo attractions of natural enemies of herbivore by triatopic interaction is a common phenomenon you can see in nature systematic signaling in the damaged plant so uh, it can be treated in a, a different manner that is plant emits this volatile for local defense and transfer of signal to the undamaged parts of the infected plants you can explain it as systemic uh, defense chemo attraction of natural enemies or herbivore can be explained by triatopic interactions and plant can talk with each other through ephes dropping so all are due to sub small volatile molecules which are coming from the insect pheromone as well as after the attack plants are emitting some volatile molecules to the atmosphere so you can see that volatile molecules are emitted to the atmosphere which carry some information so that our ecosystems will be developed and the that ecosystems will be utilized for protections of agricultural crops so i'm sh showing just few examples for example this after attacking that these plants are emitting some substances which will be used for long distance signaling so that that is if it uh, female attacks on plant then it uh, it will emit some molecules for example this type of molecules and so that male will be attracted by this molecule so it's an long distance signals another examples you can get after this incidence they will release some pheromonal molecules and with this pheromonal molecules and that pheromonal molecules will create a complex situation so that the signal will be transmitted to this male so different type of mode of communication is going on in the nature so this will be the basis of our 
research, future research, so that we can develop some strategies for insect pest management program. And this is the working module in brief. And uh, this is the main the instrument technology is solid phase microextraction procedure by GCMS. And this is our solvent free systems. If I get a, um, an, an, in the um, uh, opportunity, next uh, opportunity, I'll explain what type of methodologies this will be. But uh, as we are constrained by time, I'm not going into the details of this technology. But in most of the cases, it will be a solvent free systems. Uh, it will be with the help of some fiber. Uh, we attach this fiber into the GC port and that will be analyzed by this mechanism instrument so this is the new technology that is fifth generation multi-dimensional gcms for identifying this molecule and quantifying this molecule so that can be utilized for agricultural field i have given some model it can be an examples pheromonal trap we can produce some pheromonal trap means we can uh, plant some other plants which has uh, which can release some pheromonal molecule similar to that, but that uh, in, uh, insect will be, a uh, pest will be attracted by this plant because similar type of molecule, host signal molecules they are emitting. And if uh, this type of plants have some economic value, for example, it can fix nitrogen, that will be a good pheromonal trap. So this is the new strategy for this century so that we can shift, we can reduce, the usage of chemical pesticide, chemical insecticide, and to develop some uh, biofriendly, eco-friendly strategies. And this is the, if we I can identify this molecule from the insect, so synthetic pheromone can be produced, manufactured, and if with a dispenser, we can spray this synthetic pheromones in the field, uh, so uh, it can be a, management program, insect pest management program uh, to develop for agricultural field. And biotechnological approach can be generated so that one gene responsible for trap crop, uh, from the trap crop can be introduced. Uh, the same type of gene which can produce host signals so we can replace these genes in the some trap crop so that same type of molecules is coming out which has some pheromonal significance and then the last i am finishing my phenomenal story with tegos quotation and we are all in this if we think in a different way that the universes with different fragment molecules. We are in the ethereal nature. And I'm ending my session also with the statement of Upanishad, the fragments of the blossoms of your heart. So we'll think, we'll work, we'll establish new findings from this pheromonal research. And for my student, the take home message is, we should think to develop some new strategies to reduce the load of insect, artificial synthetic chemical insecticide and pesticide to make our environment more eco-friendly. I'm showing some videos that will, I think, that will be interesting. So you can see that is what is the mode of marking fluid spray. It's from Rashik Bill. Ah, this is the mode. They're raising their tails and spraying some fluid on the tree. So it's not ordinary urination. So it's a non-editing file. I'm showing the non-editing file to take the original lessons from this video. 
So another uh, picture about which I have told, uh, actually when we have, the camera trap was there in our field. So in one day, uh, we have observed such a phenomenon. In the first sight, we cannot believe uh, in our own eyes that it may happen, but it happened. And I'm thankful also, I express my sincere thanks to my student, Bishotos. Uh, he's also a student of Calcutta University, uh, Department of Zoology. He was with me. Uh, actually, he has taken this video. He has got this opportunity. Both are females. It's in Kojbiar, not Bengal. Next slide is, how do we collect the samples? It's a tedious job. <clears throat> in one shot we got, used to get 2 ml. In another shot, used to get 20 ml or 40 ml. So it is by chance to collect the samples. That is the most hard, hard task for this research. <clears throat> so thank you all. This is uh, my semiochemical topic with plant systems, which are under stress in high altitude of Eastern Himalaya. So I'm sh really very happy to show you these slides. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful lecture. Ma'am, uh, can you please switch on your yeah, video? Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm OK. OK. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And ma'am, we have some questions. So if you yes. give permission, can I go through them? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So our first question is from Pooja Roy. And she wants to know that whether hmm. normal tiger urine excretion is different from scent marking spray in tigers. Yes. Yes, I have explained. That is, um, I can show you another video, but uh, I think uh, it will take some time. Actually, ordinary initial urination means, uh, uh, actually, in my, uh, I think in the previous slide I have shown that uh, uh, tail will be placed downward. And uh, they will be a little bit in a sitting posture. 
but uh, in case of multiple story they will stand and they will be uh, standing and the uh, same will be laid that is the mode okay uh, i'll show but we will take some time i have that video also uh, that is uh, that is a totally different mode. but both are interesting feature is interesting thing is that is both are coming to imaginary pattern that is our observation you know but they if they try to spray of suppose for example i to 10 times for urination they can spray uh, at least 50 to 60 times more in uh, martin spray spray so we are spending so much of energy for spraying this thing. and during proester phase you know that the doing plus it becomes uh, uh, almost zero then plus is again integrated Okay, ma'am. So our next question is from Pravat Kumar Swain, and he wants to know what is the importance of synergy semio in semio chemicals for organism. Ah, uh, please explain. What is the importance of synergy semio chemicals for organism? Synergy means you are mentioning. Uh, I just want to try to understand synergy semio chemicals. But trying to explain that is a uh, mixture in a mixture uh, with a similar type of chemicals uh what actually with uh, provat can you explain me in detail okay ma'am he may comment it on the comment session he also have another yeah, question i think uh, he is trying to understand that is a synergy in chemicals means some uh, uh, more um, two or more molecules they will work together to uh, carry a single message like that is it like that ma'am uh, he will there are two types of concept one concept uh, previously was that a specific molecule is responsible to carry a specific information but the now theory has been changed now that is a mixture of compounds may carry a single message also so concept have been changed from single molecule to multiple molecule okay ma'am he also he also has another question so what is the difference between allelochemicals and pheromones for different individual of organisms okay the basic difference is uh, we use this terminology allelochemicals when it will be in inter specific label so pheromones is inter individual level intra specific level so the definition wise these two are different so i think you have got your answer so the next question is from puja kundu and uh, she is asking two ap present in both bengal tiger white tiger as well as in plants like pies leaf what is the linking path yeah that is my Difficult question uh, to answer to give you answer because we do not know. So I have already explained that is the um, uh, source. Actually, you can synthesize two AP uh, by just a proline, L-proline, and with a fructose. So these two uh, molecules are primary molecules. So it's coming through the primary pathway. So the primary pathway is uh, present in uh, in plants as well as in animal systems. So now it becomes two AP in some animals and plants, and uh, it's in not in all. So what will be the root? What will be the Uh, enzyme uh, that is uh, i am just uh, sending this query to my next generation of students to unravel this path biochemical path because we cannot try because it's a, a group 3 animal so we cannot give any radioactive materials to this to identify the biochemical pathway in the plant systems we have tried and uh, for example say in uh, rice we have tried but uh, environment department they have not given us permission to work with rice plant putting some radioactive materials so to track the biochemical pathway it is uh, essential uh, to work with radioactive materials to um, track this path so we cannot do it but i think for the sake of research our next generation and student will uh, can do it and the situation will be better 
so that that type of problem can be addressed in future okay ma'am our next question is from shonchan gorai can we use chemical pheromone for trapping the animals in cage to transfer them in the forest itself is the chemical pheromone being synthesized in industrial level yeah that we are trying that is the new domain in india actually uh, that is the new domain but in west they are trying they have synthesized already synthesized some um, artificial pheromone and they are trying to spread in a agricultural field with the trap crop so uh, we are in a very uh, necessary stage but we can think about this matter uh, so that we can formulate a program uh, so to uh, apply it in our agricultural field in the main crop okay ma'am uh, shanchari ghorai also has another question Two AP is present in the Bengal tiger and Siberian tiger. Then how can they be distinguish? They can distinguish the odor of the same species when they are present in the same place. Exactly. Exactly. That is a very interesting question to answer. One thing, uh, I will add another question to Shanjari. That is, you have told that it is present in Siberian tiger and Bengal tiger, but uh, it is uh, more um, easy to answer. That is, uh, geographically they are separated, so that is not a big issue. So they are geographically se separated, so there is uh, no confusion between that uh, Siberian tiger is getting the smell of Bengal tiger. So that is not a very difficult question. But the question, uh, difficult question to answer is. that is you know in the uh, madhya pradesh forest mp uh, in central india before 60s uh, indian leopards and tiger was there so the uh, live in a same forest uh, and now actually we are not getting uh, the situation like that but in that case if indian leopards and tiger both have to appear in the same forest they are living so how do they distinguish now from this questions the concept of single molecule transmission for pheromonal information or multiple molecules uh, responsible for pheromonal uh, communication that question arises and now we had the concept that is signature is the most important part that terminology was addressed by white uh, from oxford that is it is not responsible for a single molecule it is the combination of molecules and ensembles of all molecules will create a signature mixture that will carry the information that can be done also have some other questions so is it okay if we take a few more Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So the next question. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from Dr. Bishash, and if the same chemicals, for example, two AP, is secreted by different organisms, then how the receiver distinguishes them, and how chemical fingerprinting is working? Okay, okay. Uh, the basic concept of being a pheromone. is individuality okay that means he has to create a situation that will that can be uh, distinguishable from the others so i can give a very simple examples that means suppose uh, the pheromone has 20 free fatty acids which are very volatile for example valeric acid uh, heptanoic acid octanoic acid decanoic acid like that so suppose these are the from the same series that because these are all free fatty acids with the functional group uh, carboxyl group coh but the concentration in uh, x animal a concentration b concentration c concentration d concentration for example is different from the y animal so system is continuously creating permutation combination about the concentration quantitative variation to the, that particular individual so that it will be explainable by its own just like a fingerprint that is combination 
permutation combination of the quantitative variations will create relative concentrations of these uh, compounds will create the specific situation for that particular area. Because, for example, I can give you an exam another example. Police dog can identify criminals, different chemicals. How does it possible? So, we know that sweat smell each and every individual has a different type of sweat smell. So, criminal dogs, his olfactory system is so much developed so that he can distinguish, that dog can distinguish one from other. But our olfactory systems, it's not so much developed so that we cannot distinguish one particular person from the other. So, such type of olfactory communications are going on in the tigers also, we do not know. How do they decode this language? So coding decoding systems depends on the physiology of the olfactory system of that organisms. That is also a unsolved area. Okay, ma'am. So the next How question is the next question is from Shoheli Bishwash and. Uh, she wants to know, do any kind of phytohormones released from damaged plants can attract insect or pathogens for enhancing infectivity? Okay. So, in a big definition, you can designate it as phytohormones. But, uh, for example, abscisic is you can take ABA. But um, uh, phytohormones, uh, you can explain jasmine acid is like that. But all are in a very... Uh, um, uh, big definitions. If you specify each and every compounds in a different class, that will be easy to explain. Phytohormones actually is a big uh, class of compounds, which includes many of these pheromones also, pheromonal molecules also. So it is easy. It will be wiser to uh, take uh, into consideration different types of uh, different compounds, not in a uh, grouped either in a single definition as phytohormone. Okay, ma'am. So another question is from Shayan Bhattacharji, and he is stating that um, Sir Brombochari first noticed the smell of pheromones in and around polash tree. So, ma'am, yeah. his question is: is there, is there a relationship between tiger and polash tree? Okay, okay, that is us. Uh, really, I'm happy to tell this story. Uh, in Simlifal forest, actually during that time, uh, uh, tiger was there. Now we cannot see tiger in Simlifal, but uh, tiger was there during Simlifal forest. So Brombachari once saw, they, one day he saw that a tiger, a female tiger, he saw uh, spraying something, some fruits on a polished leaf. And he... After that incident, he actually took this leaf and tie a string and put this leaf into the water. So to assess that for how many days the smell will persist. He saw that for after three days, the smell also persists. He just did same experiment. Uh, Actually, uh, during that time, he didn't get the samples. But in Nandan Kanon, we have got numerous samples. It, it was a big project with MOEA. So what we did, we have taken the marking fluid from the tiger and sprayed on different types of trees, not only Polash, Shirish, Shimul, and many trees. We have seen that it is actually not Polash. By many trees, you can... Uh, do this experiment, you can get these smells. The thing is, uh, science behind it, uh, that is, all leaves has a surface coating of wax layer in the epithelial cuticle wax. So that wax will be acting as a fixative layer for sustenance of this smell, marking fluid. So leaf wax is acting here as a fixative. So all leaves, all angiospermic leaf has this fixative layer. 
So it is not only restricted to the polish tree. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So our next question is from Shubhash, uh, Shubhash Kanti Roy. And madam, is there any ecological confinement to the presence of 2AP because pandanus plant and Bengal tiger are from Shundarbon areas? To some extent, I agree with you. But um, in uh, another cons uh, considerations, I couldn't tell because you can see Mohua plant. It has also 2AP. If you go to Pudulia district, far away from Sundarban, it's a dry area and ecology is different. So in that situation, you can get this smell. If you go in spring, that is in uh, late March or early April, uh, you can get uh, the whip of uh, that Mahua Tuepi here and there. So I couldn't tell that it is restricted to the mangrove Sundarban only. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so there are just two more questions remaining. Uh, ma'am, would you take it? Mm, or yes. we will okay. okay, no problem. So the next question is Vinod Gupta. In transgenic animals, pheromones mm. are same in basic nature or different? I have no idea. Anybody has attempted this transgenic animal pheromone? If you have some information, please. Um, try to contact with me so that I, I can learn something from you. I do not have uh, any information uh, related to transgenic animal pheromone until today. Uh, insect pheromone might be. Uh, insect definitely, there are some. But uh, I do not know uh, such um, um, evidences till today. I do not have any knowledge. Vinod, you can contact me if you have uh, the specific uh, um, examples of it. I'll be happy to learn from you. Okay. okay. So here we have our last question. It is again from Bijoy Bishash. Is there any way that we can use the semiochemicals to minimize human animal conflict? If yes, then how? And if not, then why not? Yes, that can be a strategy definitely. <laughs> For the mammals, I don't know. That is, pheromone trap can be a solution for resisting them. Uh, at least for the tiger, I do not have any idea. It will be really a uh, uh, hard task to solve. Uh, you can uh, think over it. You can make a plan that why is it, how is it possible? That is, uh, we can use the pheromone and trap to resist human uh, animal conflict. I do not have an uh, idea whether it is possible. The thing will be that we have to collect buckets of buckets of marking fluid and we will spray to the fencing so that uh, tiger will not come to that area. Uh, that can be definitely a strategy. Uh, we can modify our thinking in that way. Okay, uh, definitely. It but we, we have to you know, make a plan. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your story. And I guess audience is very happy because they have you have clarified all their questions. <laughs> and we are already a little bit late with time. So I would request our mentor and convener, Professor Enaroy Banerjee, to give the vote of thanks to you. Really, I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Akashlina. And thank you so much. Moshumi, mm -hmm. I, I was stuck to hear like I'm watching some thriller. I have not <laughs> gotten up once even to drink water or anything. Such a fantastic research you are doing. And I was uh, just intrigued to think that communication is key. Right now, it's, it's a power struggle between different humans. It's about relationships between, uh, you know, intra-human and human animal, uh, human nature. So it is all uh, communication. And uh, I, I was just intrigued to think that some of my students here, including Akashlina, they are uh, trying to work on the communication aspect of probiotics and the immune cells and the cells of the inflamed tissue. And here you are talking about exactly that, how uh, communication 
happens between different species. And I was also intrigued to think that human beings have totally moved to the verbal form of communication. And therefore, and one uses all kinds of, you know, cosmetic beauty products to <laughs> lessen any kind of body odor. And I don't know if for world peace, we need to ban all the uh, deodorants. So what a wonderful lecture. So uh, thank you so much for sharing your research with us. And I think uh, we have created some kind of a record on PPB because there have never been so many questions. So Akashina mm -hmm. was just saying that we are running short of time, but uh, <laughs> there have never been so many questions and this is so absorbing. And many of the questions are also very thought provoking. So um, <laughs> I hope uh, you know more networking and collaborations will come out. And thank you for gracing our platform with your uh, wonderful insight. And we appreciate how much patience it requires. Uh, any kind of behavioral studies, because animals are not going to be performers to you. They will uh, do their own business. And it is our uh, query to understand exactly. what they mean uh, is what is driving us. And we wish you all the best for uh, your continuing work. And thank you once again for coming on our platform. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really very happy to be associated with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And also thank you to all the team, to um, the people I uh, did not mention at the beginning of the talk, uh, Rup Kotha, who did the trial run. Uh, and uh, today's talk um, doesn't have those people, but I should definitely take their names. And they are uh, Shriya and uh, uh, Sundaram, Soumya, Krishnamurti, uh, Shinjini, uh, Pail is here today, Nondita. Um, and please forgive me if I have missed out anybody, but without your constant um, uh, you know, engagement with the platform, it wouldn't be what it is today. So thank you, viewers, and do stay with us. And Moshmi, I'll see you uh, when you are back in Kolkata. Kolkata <laughs> spring is almost knocking at the door. So okay. we'll welcome you back. Okay, thank you, Akashlina. Thank you, everyone. And to all our viewers, please stay with us and follow us in Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube. You can get all our recorded videos in our YouTube channel. And do follow us in our website, ppbiology.wordpress.com, where you can get all information about our upcoming conferences and interesting topics. And our next uh, schedule is on 30 January. So please join us. And till then, have a nice day. And thank you for watching.